stations. We have a Professor Joseph Gitile Naituli, who is a governance expert. We have Franklin Mukwanja, the Executive Director, Center for Multi-Party Democracy. Also with us uh, is Asaska Labarakwe, public policy expert. You know, Safin, you say it's been three days since elections. It feels, certainly feels like a week. People <laughs> have been waiting and the patience is running I out. tell you. <laughs> but, you know, just a quick update. The IBC from their website, and this is public, you can also check it out yourself, forms.ibc.or.ke, they've received from 34 A's from 46,203 polling stations. So they only have about 26 to go. Now the form 34 B's, which is the cumulative na figures from the constituency level, they've received 213 out of 291. But there's also the physical manual verification that's happening right now at the Bombers of Kenya. So when you see them giving the updates, they're talking about the constituencies' tallies that are now finally confirmed, and they are doing their tally separately. So we'll cross over also to Ayub to show you what's really going on there and the numbers that are there so far. But Prof, let me bring you in and start with you here. What has been your assessment of the IBC's performance this far? I think I've been actually very good. Yeah very transparent, which is what we have been looking for along. Um, and even their work spent, I think, is very good because um, people are making pronouncements about urgency, about anxiety. I even see here a keen sense of urgency at Mbomas, as Kenyans await election. I can tell you this. I've never seen an election where Kenyans actually don't care, <laughs> even when you announce these results. Because, um, you know, the previous elections, you have seen even in the turnout was, goes to 95 in some areas. Because the Kenyans always have been very old for the candidates to change their lives. They have come to the conclusion that their lives will not be changed by any of the candidates in the ballot, <laughs> basically. I mean, when you looked at promises made by, for example, uh, Kenya Kwanza, they are the same promises they made when they were selling Uru Kenyatta to us. 2013. People are very much aware of this. That's why there is actually no anxiety. They, people need to try to stop putting anxiety on the people of Kenya. Because these fellows are going with their business as usual. They know that nothing really will change until it changes. You understand? So even the turnout, why it's so low, is a reflection of the fact that in previous elections, uh, people are awful, that their lives will change. They actually believed in the candidates, but because of the performance of the Jubilee administration, the Kenyans have lost hope with the politicians. Okay. So these people can now take their seven days according to law and they announce there yeah. will be no anxiety and there is no anxiety okay. out there. <laughs> Asaska, do you agree with this? Because there are some people who say there's a lot of anxiety. Prof says that people have lost trust in the political system, so they don't really care. That's the reason why the turnout was even low. Uh, thank you, Trevor. I think uh, I'm of different opinion from Prof here because yeah. uh, in this year's election, Kenyans are hopeless, feel very hopeless and very uh, helpless. And that shows how, how that have, has affected the voter turnout. And I think currently it's about approximately about 65% turnout yeah. overall. No, 56. Okay. 65. 65, I believe. Yeah, 65. Uh, what am I seeing there? My records. No, stay, stay with the IBC number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, approximately about. Uh, said it's 65. About 65 percent. Yeah. And uh, you asked about uh, what we think about IBC this time round. And that was IBC over there. No. I'm busy, Kenya. No, that's what I turn out at 56. No, no, no. It was no. 65, no. Prof. Okay. Yeah. 65. <laughs> 65. So I, the IBC this time round has done a decent uh, job. Yeah. Uh, despite some logistical issues here and there, and the failure of some uh, Kim skits in, in a number of uh, polling stations countrywide, I think they've done well. And what amazes me this time round, Trevor, is the fact that uh, with the IBC data dump on the portal, as much as Kenyan citizens don't have that capacity and time to really take each form and verify themselves, this has created a wave of citizen participation in the electoral process for the first time in Kenya. I think I'll say kudos to IBC for that. Yeah, it's interesting what you say that because you know from 34 Bs have already been uploaded, there are 213 of them out of 291. Yeah, about 99%. So if, yeah, if it, it's, if that's 73.2%. But if you want to tally now, you can literally log in there and do the job yourself. True, but we but, don't have the capacity. But who, personally, who has the patience? <laughs> even but that. I, I like the fact that uh, we are head to head, yeah. uh, telling ourselves. Media houses are doing the same. So I think for me, this this has changed. 
um, the transparency and credibility of the IEBC on, on this part. Yeah. I think I, I really applaud them for this. Okay. Mkwanja, do you see a more credible process from here henceforth? Because there are those who are saying, okay, fine, this time they may have got a few people flat-footed, but maybe in 2027, if people expect this, then the tallies will even be faster. I reckon we can only get better. Uh, from the point of view that we have had various advices and audits of the elections. Uh, 2013 is a good learning ground uh, from the Supreme Court to the IABC itself uh, to 2017, uh, the nullification, way back to the Krigler Commission report. And, and I think we can only get better. Uh, we must comment uh, the IABC uh, and, and the signs that they have improved uh, the credibility uh, and the legitimacy uh, of, of the outcome can only be, uh, you know, uh, pinpointed uh, once we have gone through the process. But so far, in terms of the polling process, in terms of the counting, uh, in terms of the styling, we can see a good improvement. Um, we have no issues in regard to the paper trail. We have no issues in regard to data management and transmission of results. We can basically say that there have been this, this been an, a notable increase in terms of transparency and data access, which points to the uh, usual uh, understanding uh, that the challenge with IEBC is not capacity. It is uh, the interests of other players that makes it not utilize its capacity. And, and when we have uh, seen improved coordination from other electoral man, you know, um, management institutions coordinating much better with IBC, uh, that points to some level of majority yeah. that, that we have always expected and it can only get better. In regard to what my two uh, analysts have said, I, I would take um, a bit of what they have said and agree and also disagree. Um, you see, elections are important in a democracy, but they are not sufficient by themselves to uh, make sure that the country is progressing. Uh, progress is based on how uh, the society works, you know, both minority and majority. Uh, to bolster democratic uh, institutions and performance, uh, to promote uh, public participation and citizen engagement. And it's quite disappointing to some level as uh, a democratic development practitioner uh, to see the low voter turnout. Um, because I am certain that it's not out of disinterest or ignorance, uh, but we were well aware before this, uh, we went to the ballot on Tuesday morning that uh, the economic situation uh, was going to always inform voter behavior um, and, and turnout. And it, we can see it. Um, uh, but nonetheless, we have good numbers, 14 million, that can be able to decide who will govern us. Now it's uh, trying to switch the gears. Are Kenyans anxious? I think there is a level of anxiety in terms of when can we conclude this uh, so that uh, with this current economic situation, people want to come out there and freely, uh, you know, get their next bread. And, and that is why some of them were not able to move, because it needs about 5,000 shillings, uh, to move from Nairobi uh, to about 300, 200 kilometers uh, to vote. So it was an expense that they needed to. So people right. were anxious to the extent that they need to get out there and continue their normal life. But the level of anxiety, I think you cannot deny it. Pro Prof, I know you have something to say about what here, but as, even as you do that, Ali, I'll just take you by your word. You spoke about Kenyans don't really care. And you talked about the turnout as evidence enough to show how Kenyans mm -hmm. are really hopeless and they don't even want to, to know what's happening around them. I mean, I want to personally believe that Kenyans should care because the elections is a process that it's sort of like you're giving power to somebody else to exercise it on your behalf. For me, I feel Kenyans should care. Let me take you back to just tell us a bit about who failed Kenyans, what really happened, where did the rain start beating us? Because it's all about lessons. We have to move forward. Where I did agree. It I, I agree with you completely that mm -hmm. Kenyans should care and they will have to care because I'm banning government, they say, is elected by Ngundi citizens who don't vote, who don't participate in voting. Uh, before I address that one, I want to tell my fellow panelists here that the Kenyans are going about their business as normal. 
In fact, when I was coming here, I passed through different places. From Rungai, I went to Rosalind. People are just walking. They are not, uh, they are not even listening to the radios. Do you know why? There is an ingredient missing in this election. The tribe is missing. This election has collapsed the tribe. Now, because there is no tribe, now we are all Kenyans. We're taking for the result. The tribe is what was bringing the emotions to accompany the, the voting and all that. So this election, we are Kenyans, all of us. And they are not worried, actually, who takes it, which direction it goes. There's nobody who is frightened. There's nobody who, like previous elections, we are on edge because our person must take. Now, that brings us back to as founders. Jubilee administration has failed us. Jubilee administration over-promised and underperformed, Over-promised and under-delivered. So the populace right now is very skeptical of promises because the promises weren't given. Elaborately, in terms of, in fact, I think one of the candidates, uh, Ruto, is fantastic in, with ones. The man is an artist. When he sold the Uru to us, because he's the one who sold the Uru to us, he gave us the same promises which he has now given. We believed him then. The people don't believe him now okay. because nothing of that was achieved. Yeah. So people are able to judge and they you know and they say, look, we must have a president. So they drag themselves to vote. I was asking uh only Lendi in Imero uh, about the voting. And she says, you know, Professor. I've come to vote, but those who are not voting are more than me. Of course, now that is not exactly true. Yeah. Because if 65% has voted, then she was wrong. But that was our perception. Our perception is he is participating mm -hmm. in uh, electing the president, but she thinks the majority have been left okay. at home because they are not participating. You believe fell into this country. Okay. As, as Aska, is it that the tribal arithmetic is what has now made this better, voters? more peaceful? More peaceful, yeah, exactly. like prophecy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, Trevor, uh, if you look at both manifestos for uh, Zimio and for Kenya Kwanza, you see that uh, economy tops the list. And uh, it's, it's a crazy time in Kenya right now if you look at the economics and inflation, high debt, high food, high cost of living, you know. You're paying a lot for unga, you know, <clears throat> you're paying a lot for fuel. Um, I think, as I said earlier, um, we, we feel hopeless. We feel a bit helpless. And uh, I pity the... The, the next incoming president, because there's a lot of work to do in a very short span of time, especially to bring down the cost of living in this country, Trevor. So as much as uh, uh, this election have been ran on a platform of issues, not really ideologies or tribal, th there's a little bit of class here and there with the hustler narrative. But uh, overall, I'm, I'm, I feel like tribe still plays a little bit. Not as much pr pronounced as the previous election circles, though. All right. I, 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 yeah. I honestly, you know, I, I, am, I was tutored at, at some point that the professor is always right. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I will uh, honestly disagree with the professor in regard to the ethnic arithmetics. Yeah. The mere fact that uh, the Gemma nation uh, voted for a different uh, candidate does not seem to convince me that there was no ethnicity in this ballot. Um, and, and you can see that it's still a very, the coalitions and the presidential ticket is still very much uh, an arrangement and a settlement of the elites. Um, look at uh, the, the, the struggle in, in Bungomba and, and uh, how Raila Odinga, when they are begging and saying, please, uh, you are my people, don't embarrass me. But the mere fact that he didn't have Watangula, and he, he has lost Bungomba. Uh, look at uh, the way the Kalenjin nation voted. You know, look at the way the Lua nation voted. So there is, there is the only positive about it is that there was no Gema candidate. Uh, you know, and therefore William Ruto outfoxed the boss in terms of selling. Uh, you know, the vibe against Raila Odinga, and they had to agree with him. So that's the only difference. Okay. Otherwise, if you look at the, 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 the way things are playing out, yeah. uh, it's still largely 
But an ethnic uh, tribe or not tribe? Yeah. I mean, this this one, conversation, one indicator, this conversation one indicator of tribal yeah. angle in voting right. is turnout. Prof, we are coming back to just pick this up and see how it has impacted the outcome of the 2022 general election. But remember, we are also linking up with our reporters from different parts of the country.